Now, <clears throat> isn't she beautiful? <laughs> no, you relax, okay? Yeah, okay, relax. She's going to speak in German because that's her native language, and Peter, the beautiful and illustrious translator that is multidimensional, will be speaking in English. <laughs> And so you'll speak a little bit in yeah. German and then take a pause so Peter yeah. can catch up yeah. to you, yeah. okay? Yeah, I She understands English pretty well, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Take your time, hold that mic right up there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hello. Also, ich habe Brustkrebs und die Ärzte haben zu mir gesagt, das ist das Endstadium. Hello. Und, um, Hello, good morning. Um, I suffer from breast cancer, and um, the doctors told me that it's uh, in the terminal state, so it's final state, they said. So, and jetzt weiß ich, dass es stimmt, weil er kann gehen. Um, and now I know that it's the final state because the cancer can go now, it can leave me now. Als ich kam, dachte ich, um, ich schaffe das nicht, weil ich bin so gegangen. When I came here, I thought I would never make it because I walked like this, like I just showed. Der linke Arm war ziemlich gelähmt. And my left arm was paralyzed, basically. Ich konnte rechts nicht viel tragen, weil der einfach zu schwach war. And I couldn't really carry that much with my right hand either because I was just so weak. Und ich habe noch drei offene Stellen hier, also von der Operation. And I still have three open spots there on my chest from the last surgery. Und die waren ungefähr so zwei Euro Stücke groß. And they were about as big as a two euro coin. Und meine gute Freundin Gundula hat mir dann am Freitag den Verband am Abend neu gemacht und dann sind wir beide fast ausgerastet. And my friend Gundula, she helped me <laughs> to put in uh, put on a new band aid and uh, we just couldn't we couldn't believe it. Ja. Yeah. Wir haben äh, gesehen, dass eine Stelle fast ganz zu ist und die anderen zwei viel kleiner geworden sind. So one spot was uh, totally closed already and the other two spots were really, really tiny. Und Now, you have to understand that after the surgery, these lesions were open for a very long time. They weren't healing. You understand? They were staying the same and getting worse. I saw the pictures. And then all of a sudden, she starts showing up here and overcoming herself. And to her surprise, when she looks down to change the bandage, one of them is completely closed and the other two are healing. You understand, yes? Und mein Arm kann ich jetzt also ziemlich hochheben, das konnte ich noch nicht. And I can lift up my arm like this. Look at this. Ich kann klatschen. And I can clap also. Konnte ich auch nicht. I couldn't do that before. Und ich habe noch Tumoren am Hals und die waren richtig ekelhaft fett und dick. And so. there are a few tumors on my, on my neck also and they were really nasty and fat. Und Gundula sagt, komm, wir schauen mal nach und Und sie waren fast weg. Also es sind noch zwei, drei da, aber das ist lächerlich. Und Gundula said, hey, let's, let's check up on those tumors also. And they were almost gone. And it's just a, a tiny little fraction is left. And she says, it's ridiculous. Und, <laughs> und ich habe, am Montag hatte ich noch Chemo. Und diese Chemo nimmt, macht alle Haare kaputt. Also ich hatte weder... Ähm, Ich hatte keine Haare mehr am ganzen Körper. And on Monday I took my last chemotherapy and uh, it just eats up all the hair on the body and I, I didn't have almost any hair on my body at all. Und am Samstagmorgen gehe ich ins Badezimmer und schaue in den Spiegel und ich schaue nochmal und ich schaue nochmal und ich um, denke, yeah. ich kann es nicht glauben. And uh, yesterday I went into the bathroom in, in the morning and I looked into the mirror and I looked and looked and looked and I couldn't believe it. Ich habe wieder Augenbrauen und meine Wimpern sind zurück. So my eyelashes are back and my eyebrows are back again. Und so geht es immer weiter. And it goes on and on like this. Ich bin so glücklich und ich bin so glücklich. I'm just so ich könnte happy. die ganze Welt umarmen. I'm so happy I could embrace you all in all the world. 
Hold it. Say it again. Peter, say it again. I'm just so happy I could embrace the entire world at the same time, and uh -huh. you all, all of you here also. Mein Gesicht war ähm, schief und hängend. Mein, mein äh, linkes Auge hing total runter. My, my face was kind of crooked and uh, my left eye would just kind of hang down into um, the cheek. Und ähm, ich hatte hier durch diesen Halstumor eine richtig dicke Schwellung. And uh, from one of the tumors um, there was a swelling on the left side also. Und auch das war am Samstagmorgen fast weg. Hier ist noch ein bisschen, aber das ist nicht mehr viel. And Saturday morning it was almost gone. There's just a little bit left right now, but it's almost gone at all. <laughs> Sorry, ich, ich muss weinen, weil ich so glücklich bin. I just have to cry because I'm so happy. Das ist meine Geschichte und ich danke euch fürs Zuhören. This is my story and thank you so much for listening to me. So, let me ask you a few questions here. Most of you would walk right past her and never notice her because she just blends in as a normal person. And you know, when she got that diagnosis after they did the surgery on her and they opened up all those lesions and the chemotherapy suppressed her immune system, and the doctor told her that it was terminal and that she was going to die. What emotion do you think most people feel after that moment? Angry. Anger and fear, yes or no? Yes. And all of a sudden, in that experience, when they, they get that information and they feel the change in their internal state, the moment they feel differently inside of them, they pay attention to the cause of it, and the brain takes a snapshot. And that's called a memory, a long-term memory. And that moment becomes the moment that they have to overcome. Are you with me still? So they think within the circuitry of that experience, and they feel within the boundaries of those emotions, and their entire state of being is in the past. Are you with me still? And of course, most people can't think greater than how they feel. And if fear has gripped them, then their fear is greater than their gratitude, or their wholeness, or their freedom, or their inspiration. Yes or no? Yes. And yet, when I sat backstage with Rita yesterday, and her heart was wide open, yeah. and she was feeling over and over again, kept telling me, I feel so blessed. I feel so grateful. I am so happy in this moment. Don't you know that every time she acknowledges that, she heals more? Are you with me still? And of course then, when it comes time to open her heart, she's sitting there doing that meditation. She's not thinking, oh Jesus, here we go again, the same thing. <laughs> no. You know what she's saying? Another time to feel even more. Another time to condition my body into the future. Another time to downregulate the gene for cancer and upregulate the gene for health and restoration and regrowth and repair. And her body in days is responding to a new mind. Now, yeah. most people would say, well, she's a little elderly. It'll probably take her quite a bit of time to recover. Yeah, that's normal. That's natural. But she dragged her body out of the past this week. She took herself out of the past. She chose herself. And when it came time to do that walking meditation, she had no problem pretending that she was healthy. Tell me what her other choices are. Tell me. This is it for her. And she is 100% uncompromising and committed. And because of that, she moves closer to the divine. 
And because of that, her heart, heart opens a little bit more. And the moment she starts noticing her beautiful eyelashes uh, growing back and her eyebrows coming around and her wounds healing and her face changing and her arms, she can lift it up. What kind of feeling you think she's having? Huh? And don't you know the moment she feels that feeling and the energy from that experience is going to drive her to do it with more passion, more conviction, more intensity. She's going to go a little further because she's seeing the changes. And once you start seeing the changes in your life, and I don't care if it's with your body or the thing you're working on creating, the moment you start seeing things healing in your life, mm -hmm. the moment you start seeing feedback from your world yep. in uncommon and unusual ways, the moment things appear out of nowhere because you created them from nowhere, the moment something appears out of nothing because you created it from nothing, the moment it happens in no time because you created it in no time, that's all you're going to need. And you're not going to wake up in the morning, oh, God, i got to do another meditation. That's not going to be your energy. Your body is going to wake you up and say, let's do this. I want some more of that. Whatever you're giving me, give me some more. Yeah. Because if you can't wake up in the morning and be inspired by the day, it means that you can predict the feeling of every experience and your body's already resigned because nothing new is happening. People who create their life can't wait to get up and live it. And she is the example of truth. And I would rather have dinner with her than any famous person, any scientist, <laughs> any academic, because she's the example of truth. Yes or no? Yeah. We can't explain what you dream, and we're not quite sure why you dream, but we can definitely confirm that your brain is a night owl. Did you know that humans spend one-third of their lives asleep, or that sleep deprivation is deadlier than food deprivation? When the lights go out, your brain is purging toxins, storing memories, and making important connections so that you can be more productive at sunup. So do higher earners make more money because they get better sleep? Or do they sleep better because they have more money? Let's break it down. Sleep is the brain's way of saying, step aside, I'll take it from here. Two groups of cells in the hypothalamus and the brain stem trigger a loss of consciousness known as slow wave sleep. About 45 minutes after lying down and closing your eyes, your muscles are now relaxed and your breathing is slowed. Slow wave sleep is named for the large slow brain wave it induces. This is the sleep stage when the brain recovers from its daily activity and uses this time to create and store new memories. This is also how we learn and retain information. So the next time you think pulling an all-nighter might be a good idea, go to bed instead. Studies show a better sleep can improve retention by as much as 40%. After about 70 minutes into your snooze, you'll slip into rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep. This is also called paradoxical sleep. Since your brain becomes highly active, it's as if you're awake. Your breathing gets faster, your heart rate increases, and your eyes flutter randomly while the rest of your body remains paralyzed. And yet you can still run, jump, fly, free fall, because you're dreaming. We forget 90% of our dreams after just 10 minutes of waking up. Some of them, we're even happy to forget. But what the brain accomplishes while you sleep will always be remarkable. Do you often wake up feeling clear-headed and ready to seize the day? You might think that beautiful sunrise has something to do with it, but really, that's the feeling of your brain's overnight shift work paying off. We've already covered how the brain creates memories and encodes information while you sleep, and this process not only helps you to retain information, but it prepares you for upcoming actions and decisions. In other words, sleep on it might actually be the best advice. While you're in REM sleep, your brain is busy transferring memories from its motor cortex to its temporal lobe, where they become long-term memories. This helps physical tasks feel like second nature, 
It's why we never really forget how to drive a car or swing a golf club once we've learned. And it's one reason why some of the world's top violinists sleep two hours more than the average American. But even if you're not learning to drive, dance, or play a new instrument, your brain is still making creative connections while you sleep. A sleep study at the University of Berkeley, California, found that 33% of participants were more likely to make connections between distantly related ideas after waking up. This is our brain teaching us creative problem solving. The clear-headedness one experiences after a good night's sleep is not just a feeling, it's true. Your brain literally clears your head at night. It releases a cerebrospinal fluid that washes away neurotoxins and cell-damaging proteins that commonly cause Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, or dementia. When the cleaning is over, 40% of this cerebrospinal fluid is absorbed back into your brain. So, not only is your brain equipped with its own plumbing system, but it also recycles. So what do you think? Can more sleep make us smarter? It might not raise your IQ, but it will certainly improve your well-being. Do you dream of being happy? Then make it a dream come true and get a good night's sleep. Besides, your brain needs to free up some space for more facts about your amazing body. Did you know that 12% of people dream entirely in black and white? A 2008 academic study found that before the advent of color television, that number was as high as 85%. The architecture of the human body has captivated the attention of sculptors, artists, and scientists for millennia. With the quest to know what lies beneath the surface, to see beyond the form, to see through. Now through the miracle of plastination preservation, part of the human connective tissue system called fascia is becoming visible in a way never before seen. Welcome to fascia in a new light. In January 2018, the Fascia Research Society, the Plastinarium, and Body Worlds embarked on a collaborative journey to create the world's first 3D human fascia plastinates. Together, they are creating history as the Fascial Net Plastination Project. Go into the thorax alone. The rat, nós temos principalmente this part of the leg. That's the scene of how dissection works. Thank you. 
才开始可改掉旧名字，以求脱去混乱细节，可剪断坏发丝。柔柔身体已受的伤，是怎会变成痴？That disease starts in the mind. It's that everything starts in the mind. In today's world, these stresses are 24/7-365. The net result is illness and disease. 90% of what takes people to the doctor is stress-related illnesses. When you perceive a threat, in the old days we referred to that as fight or flight. But now it's your spouse, or it's your boss, or it's rent that's due in a week. And yet the system reacts as though it's a life-threatening situation. And if you're running a fight or flight response all the time, your immune system is compromised chronically. We have the most money going into healthcare than any country in the world, and we have some of the worst statistics of healthcare. My body wants to be healthy, but it's the head that just—it's the fear. I don't know who I am without being sick. In a way, we have more faith in the power of cancer to kill us than we have faith in the power of infinite possibility. Every organ in the human body has the ability to heal itself under the right conditions. What are those conditions? That's that's the question. We are in a mindset that our body is a machine full of organs with buttons and levers that need adjusting. Psoriasis and eczema, cause unknown. Multiple sclerosis, cause unknown. Fibromyalgia, cause unknown. Are examples of people out there who have healed from it? When I looked at the data, they were all using these nine. Only two of them are physical. The rest are mental, emotional, and spiritual. Does this mean medicine is all negative? I go, absolutely not. Medicine does miracles with trauma. Jealous. What we see here is belief itself shifts biology. That intelligence giving us life. It is the greatest healer in the world. These symptoms are brilliantly intelligent in waking us up. Doesn't matter how long you've been sick, you can heal. And always remember that, and never forget it.